Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. You're in for one crazy, epically awesome ride on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show, hashtag one on YouTube today. Today, we have returning guest Ryan Lewis back on board with us. Ryan, let's get an update as to what you got going on for the 2023 racing season. All right. Well, today was a good day to do the meeting. Uh, I just got back from St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. I uh, had some, uh, some rims in my chassis out, uh, just getting powder coated. Uh, we went with a little different color this year. Last year, we had a bright neon pink. This year, we're going with black to match uh, color scheme. Very cool. Very cool. So, Brian, so Ryan, have you picked up any new sponsors going into 2023? I did, actually. So uh, two days ago, th this is a, a premier announcement, I guess. I picked up uh, my father-in-law, Alan Hartwood's business, Countryside Landscaping out of Allegheny, New York. And I picked up a couple of donations from family in uh, Doreen Weatherall and Don Weatherall. Okay, very cool. Very cool. So you're looking, your 2023 season is looking pretty bright out there um, going into this coming season. So are you anxious to go out and do some testing and figure out where you, where you stand as far as before the racing season starts? Uh, th there's one track, one local track I'm interested to test at. Uh, I ran a test session there last October and the track was really wet and had a lot of grip. So um, I'm eager to see what that's like in the, in the heat of the summer when it's a little drier. Okay. Okay. So Ryan, um, so you got the, the chassis power coated. Are you starting to put the body panels on it? Kind of go from there or haven't started that process yet? Well, we have, I'll spin you here. So most of the body is stripped. Oh. All is left is the nose cone. Okay. So uh, I actually finished stripping the side panels here a couple days ago. And just as you messaged me, I was about to start stripping the nose stone. Okay. 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 So what kind of paint scheme are you going with this year for 2023? Did you just change the powder coat of your frame and chassis? Well, uh, the chassis went from bright pink to gloss black. The, uh, we'll have to stay tuned to see the body. I have a, a plan in the works. And if I can execute that plan, that's what we're going with. Okay, very cool, very cool, very cool. That's awesome. So, Brian, um, Brian, um, you you're looking forward to going into 2023, um, definitely. And I'll tell you what, the drivers that have come to me via you are just pretty awesome to to recognize that you're on board, and they're like, man, we want to just be like Brian and, and come on board to your racing show. So yeah, man, I can tell you. Uh, the individuals that I know have contacted you have a heck of a lot deeper and more interesting racing story than my own. Um, I know them pretty well, and I'm interested to hear some stuff maybe that I hadn't heard before. So I, I'm looking forward to those guys. Yes, yes, definitely. So Ryan, um, so what's your weather like out there where you're at now? Well, I'm in overalls and a, and a heavy sweatshirt, so it's hovering right around freezing. My garage doesn't have heat, and the lakes aren't frozen enough yet to fish, so. Uh, it's a shop day come on out here to iowa because our lakes are frozen it's, it's so we got snow on the ground so definitely if you want to go ice fishing here you go <laughs> i'd like to it, it'd be a blessing but i have uh, i have two projects i'm looking at right now that if there's ice they're not going to get completed any further until it melts again yep 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 so what's your two projects besides the race car uh so some of what i do is uh some woodworking so i actually have a uh a wooden patio chair here that a gentleman brought to me uh just basically needs some parts replicated on it and then i just need to get it finished and painted and if he's satisfied with the results of that one there's like another nine pieces to follow it okay okay i'll tell you what ryan if i get my own office eventually i'd like for you to do like a wooden sign that kind of be part of my backdrop that'd be pretty cool so that, that's kind of along the lines of projects number two uh close family friend of ours She's like an aunt to our daughters. Uh, she requested some stools that were personalized for her own children and uh, nieces and nephews. So um, that project's been a long time in the making because freehanding letters with a router has made me nervous. Oh, oh yeah. But they came out excellent. She seemed to like them. So we're going to finish up the last couple she wants and uh, get them out to her. Okay, very cool, very cool. And maybe, you know, once I'm in the talks of getting pictures, getting stickers out for the racing show, I'm talking about, you know, once I get those out, you know, maybe get you one and slap on your race car and yeah. Absolutely. There's space for it. All righty, all righty. 
so Ryan, <laughs> um, when does your season actually kick off for your uh, racing season? Uh, we don't have a schedule at any of the tracks that I'm running yet. Um, but typically, last week in April to the second week of May is generally where they start. Okay, already, already. So you got um, tires and everything ready to go for the season, or? Yep, uh, I've got plenty of tires here. the The rims that are here that I just got back from Powder Coat, um, those have rubber for them. That's currently sitting at a friend of mine's house down in Wellsville, New York. Um, Little little shout out here. That gentleman's name is Jared Costello. He's my tire guy. Does a hell of a job. I swear by him. I won't use anybody else. Yeah, well, if you know anybody that would like to sponsor my racing show business wise in the racing industry, send them my way. I, I appreciate the sponsors. Definitely. Anytime, right. man. Yeah. So Ryan, um, looking forward to your racing season. You got your car back from Powder Coat. Um, going with a totally different chassis color. It's gonna be interesting to see what your race car looks like once you get everything all ready to rock and roll. Um, definitely, um, love to see you come out here and race something sometime. So yes, definitely. That'd be awesome. I'd, I'd like that. Yes, exactly. So, uh, Ryan, what else is going on with life these days? Um, well, my wife and kids are out today. It's a good day to be out in the shop burning time. Yeah. Um, I built a shed this fall, so I just, I hung a door on that today. Just, you know, little odds and ends to button it up. Um, I help teach a fish and wildlife program at our local high school so very cool uh we right now we have tiger trout eggs hatching so i'm in there twice a day just picking shells and dead fish we don't have disease issues i'll give a shout out to your fish and wildlife program uh definitely yep. guys guys uh, definitely uh, good luck to you with your fish and wildlife program definitely get them to come over and watch the racing show that's 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 something to watch too i'm a big fish and wildlife person myself so yeah yeah, that's uh, kind of what our, our school is known for. Um, the guy that started the program, his name's Scott Jordan. Without him, none of this is possible. It's an incredible program, and I'm incredibly honored to be carrying on the tradition. Um, the other teacher's name is uh, Brian Stumiller. He's kind of the head of the program. He just brings the energy and the expertise, and uh, it's been a nice collaborative effort. We work together well, and things are going pretty smooth. Yeah, give a sh I'm going to give a shout out to all of them guys there. So, yes, definitely, guys. Good luck to you guys with your fish and wildlife program. Um, definitely something awesome for the kids to get into, definitely. Um, but, yes, um, definitely. And you know what? If you guys, being you, you got the kids involved in fish and wildlife, they need to come out here to the Midwest because out here in Iowa, um, it's going to be cra crazy because we have a chain of lakes. It's called Spirit Lake. And then there's Okaboji and Milford. And there's lakes that all combine into one. And, Tell you what, good, good fishing area, definitely out here. No, never a bad day of fishing. No, there's not. There's not. <laughs> good day to be out on the boat, even, you know, definitely. Definitely. Yep. Um, so, um, um, definitely, Ryan, so do you, we're gonna, let's change it up a little bit. Do you have any fishing advice for me? Fishing <laughs> advice? Oh, man. Um, well, mostly I just give you ice safety advice. Uh, always go with a friend, obviously. Check conditions. Um, there's so many pages on Facebook and stuff now in Ice Shanty that uh, to go out in unsafe conditions really is unnecessary. Um, and with ice fishing, especially, like fishing in general is great with a group of friends and maybe some drinks. Uh, ice fishing is twice as much fun. Okay, okay, okay. Very cool, very cool, very cool. Bring a crowd. Yeah, yeah. So do you have some, um, your track you're going to be racing at this year, do you have some new people going to be joining the racing uh, series that you race with or, or you got some um, people coming there? Yeah, there's been a few people I've heard. Uh, the one gentleman, I don't know his name, but he bought a buddy of mine's cart, fast cart. It's a flathead motor. Uh, sounds like he's committed to running state line, which fingers crossed he does. Um, I've got a young man in Wellsville, New York named Brockton Putnam. Uh, he's getting into the flatheads. He wants to turn some laps there. So we're trying to bring him along. Um, other than that, I don't know if anybody knew. People are moving classes. People are trying new things. But uh, it seems like new racers are few and far between right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. 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 So have you been watching any racing on TV during the wintertime at all? Like uh, the Charlie Bowl or the Tulsa Shootout or anything like that? Pretty much just the highlights. Um, 
between race season and ice season, I really have to get projects done and uh, make up for lost time with my family. Uh, but I definitely catch the highlights. Uh, Supercross starts tonight, so I'll be tuning into that. And I see the Chili Bowls coming up. So I'm probably going to renew my subscription for Flow just to just watch Chili Bowl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I try and do that. I try to catch the highlights from IMCA TV. They have had uh, quite the interesting showdown at the coca Paw Winter Nationals out there for IMCA. Um, the first night of racing out there, they had a 12-car pileup on the backstretch. Everybody vying for the same spot. And it, you, you can't vie for the same spot when there's no spot to be had. <laughs> that, that's a pretty horrible way to start your new season off, you know? So, yeah. A lot of guys had their cars sold, and they were not happy. Uh-uh. Oh, and <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. I've seen yeah. it happen in kart racing. You know, you get down to the end of the season, people are looking at selling stuff, and they get in a wreck, and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm selling junk now. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's just crazy. And the thing is, is it all started with two guys that got together and they locked, locked uh, fenders, fender and bumper and couldn't get themselves separated. They spun out and just everybody started piling in. And I'm like, well, boy, this is Daytona. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, they probably had a couple heated interviews after that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Some guy that was on there, he had a new stock car and he just said, you know, I just totaled up a new chassis. So luckily, I have a backup at the shop, but he says, my winter nationals, a couple of weeks are done. I just got to go back and rebuild and start over. Yep. Have you ever interviewed uh, anybody that's been kind of ticked off heat of the moment? Um, not really. Um, I have met a couple of race cars that have been ticked off and at the heat of the moment, but it's got to kind of go with the flow of that. I have a really awesome race car driver coming up, Ryan, towards the end of the month. Um, he has a big name in the IMCA category. Um, his name is Benji Lacrosse, and Benji yep. Lacrosse runs IMCA Modified. So I got Benji Lacrosse coming out at the end of the month, so it's going to be interesting to sit and talk to Benji Lacrosse. Hopefully we can get a bunch more IMCA drivers on here. Yeah. Good to have variety. Oh, yeah. I've got some tractor full guys coming on, so, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see where this all goes. Yeah, it, it takes all kinds, man. Like, if you're a fan of, of motorsports, you're a fan of motors. Um, oh, yeah. I just like to take a moment to just kind of reflect on Ken Block a little bit. Uh, okay. Obviously, a, a huge interview or a huge uh, inspiration to a lot of us and the things he could do with a car. Um, I've known about him for the last ten or fifteen years, like, and I hold rally drivers with the highest regard. I think they're absolutely fearless and incredible. There's a lot of racing disciplines I think I could learn, and that is not one of them. Um, so just you know, losing him was was huge for the industry, for the fans. And I uh, just want to let people know that I'm, I'm thinking his family, especially his daughter, having two daughters myself, that's pretty horrible. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. It's never a good thing to lose a race car driver in any circumstance. Um, definitely. Yeah. Um, been, been, been kind of around that scene for a little while, you know, where we lost Dan Walden back in 2011. And then before that drag racing, it was Eric Medlin and Scott Coletta. And, oh yeah. Yeah, we've lost a few, and it's, it's just, you know, it's sad to see that happen, definitely. Yeah, you don't want to see that in any sport. No, not at all, not at all. And, you know, IndyCars, everybody says, well, what's the most dangerous sport of part of racing? And I, I look at things, you know, you're looking at IndyCars because IndyCars, you cover a football field a second, and you really have no time to react. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I had a, a friend of mine racing a local track last year, and, he was coming down the front straightaway. I was watching him. I was there helping him pit. And something happened on the front straightaway, and they were all piled up. The track was blocked going into one. And I just saw the nose of his car dive. And when he hit, it, I guess it ended up being fuel mostly, but it just things exploded off front of the car. It was like watching slow motion. Oh. And it was such a great feeling to see him and the guy that he hit get out of those cars and, you know, yeah. shake hands and talk about it. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen some pretty wild wrecks in my time, too. Um, Definitely one of the craziest ones I've seen is at a track I normally go to um, up in Jackson, Minnesota. It's called Jackson Motorplex now, but back in the day, corners one and two were open because they kind of, off of one and two, you kind of have a flat piece, and then it kind of runs down into a, a um, cornfield type deal. Well, what, oh, happened yeah. is, is, what happened is, is a lot of times their track prep parks your track prep equipment far enough out of the way. Well, that night they didn't have it parked far enough away, and one of the sprint cars went to go out for their feature, and they had dropped the, dropped the green flag in a 360 sprint car race, 
and some guy lost his steering and his brakes all at once. Oh man! Going into one and two, and he ran into the back of a skid loader at 100 and some miles an hour. I was just like, "Oof, did that had to hurt?" Man, I, I don't understand how we still have tracks that don't have walls. They just have like banking and then a huge drop off. Yeah, but that's enough, crazy. The new guy, the new guy that took it over, took care of that. There's a wall around there now, so thank God for that. Thank God for that. Yep. But um, yeah, but yeah, like I said, you know, racing is a amazing sport. Love to be around it. Love to sit and talk to you guys about you know your racing careers and just you know sit down and just kind of get to know you guys a lot better and definitely understand the sport a lot more no it's it's nice of you to give us a channel to kind of share those stories and and share what drives us you know what growing up nobody understood like what i loved about racing it, it was really hard to like get them hooked so i was kind of an outcast because of it and honestly the best thing i ever did was just reach out via Facebook and start shadowing people into the cart world because that's my world now. Like that's, I talk racing, I, I fish with racers. Um, I love it. I, I'm not tired of it at all. So what drives you to, to race, Ryan? It, it's everything. It's um, probably mostly the adrenaline rush, but it's, it's taking a chunk of metal and plastic and figuring out how to make it work the best and how to make it work better than everybody else. And, you know, believe it or not, I, I like the high failure rate of racing. You know, you're gonna lose way more races than you're gonna win. And I just, I always, I like chasing that rabbit and finding speed. And it just kind of gives you a feeling of accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like I said, any, I love anything with horsepower. It's, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Very, very awesome. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. But thank you, Ryan, for coming on board and giving us an update on what you've got going on going into the 2023 season. Once you get your season underway, I would like to have you back on here again to kind of give us what's going on as far as your racing season goes. And um, definitely, hopefully we can get some, get some good results out of your racing season this year. Yeah, it'd be nice to get back to you with an early win. So uh, fingers and crossed keep, if that happens. Keep inspiring them kids to do awesome things through the wildlife and wilderness program you're doing also. Thank you. We will. Yeah, and, and also inspire them to get behind the wheel also because I'll tell you what, they would love to do that also, I bet. Yeah. Yep. But you have a good day, Ryan. I will step, have you step out. I will do some little racing news and I will call you a little bit to thank you in person. All right, man. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Yep, you too. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Ooh, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Ryan Lewis. Um, driver of a go the go of his go kart out in Pennsylvania area, um, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, Pennsylvania, New York area. But he was just on board to kind of give us an update as to what's going on with his racing career um, going into the 2023 racing season. But um, ladies and gentlemen, good luck to everybody out there. Um, definitely, um, yeah, it's it's going to be pretty awesome season to kick things off. Um, a lot of the drivers are a lot of the IMCA drivers are down at Cocopa Raceway in Arizona racing the Winter Nationals. So good luck to all of them guys there. Um, definitely congratulations goes out to Jim Forjeski uh, because he um, won last night's stock car main event. So good luck, congratulations to Jim. Um, definitely on the night before, Colin Hibden picked up the A-Mod feature. So congratulations to Colin Hibden. Um, and then Jim Forjeski picked up the stock car main event, uh, not last night, but the night before also. Um, I mean, not, not last night or the night before, a couple, the first night of competition, sorry. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just coming on here to kind of get everybody to talk to racing a little bit, talk to our guest, Ryan Lewis, and also get everybody fired up because Chili Bowl is right around the court, right around the corner. So definitely it's going to be interesting to see who wins the Chili Bowl down there. We've got Gavin Bolshell, one of our racing guests. He is down there, going to be down there racing that along with Preston Latimus and some of the other drivers like um, Rico Abreu is going to be racing in it. Um, definitely, ladies and gentlemen, and Darren Pittman is going to be down there racing. But um, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, um, good luck to all of kick, everybody kicking off their racing season. Um, Kenny Wallace is down at Cocopa also. Good luck to Kenny Wallace. Um, but with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, have a good day. Catch you later. Another episode of the Josh Nolan Full Star Racing Show. Hashtag one on YouTube. Um, if you get time, definitely come, come hit me up at the Sioux Falls Racing Show, Performance Racing Show, coming up next week um, out in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I will be there. Um, but like I said, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to thank my sponsors, uh, Manning Motorsports and New England Hemophilia Association, and everybody that's been helping out with the racing show. 
And I'd like to thank all you drivers also. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, have a good day. Catch you later on another episode of the Josh Hunt Football Racing Show, hashtag one on YouTube. And if you would like to sponsor my racing show or be a guest on my racing show, feel free to email me at jjnolan151 at gmail.com, or you can call and text me at 712-209-7138, or you can hit me up on Facebook Messenger under Josh Nolan. I have the New England Hemophilia Association sticker on my uh, Facebook page, so definitely my private page, so feel free to message me on there also. And also, ladies and gentlemen, go press like on the Josh Nolan Full Star Racing Show, hashtag one on YouTube, and also go uh, press hit the subscribe and notification buttons on that channel also. But then also, ladies and gentlemen, go press like on the Josh Nolan Full Star Racing Show, hashtag one on Facebook, for all your racing news updates. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, have a good day and catch you later. And be sure to live life at full throttle.